Oh, hello. Hello. Hey, it's Chris Homestead and Hardway. And uh, we did a video a while back on servicing a 35 Ferguson gas burn. And I've had some people ask, write many questions on 135s. How to service them and how to adjust the clutch. And we're going to do a little quick video on that. Now, we're open. You know, we're a professional shop. We're open right now, so I've got to make this quick. People don't like it when you do videos on their stuff when you're working on it, you know. Come here right quick. Uh, these are your filter numbers. That's air, oil, and fuel. Now this one has a canister oil filter on it. If you look right here. All of them don't. Some of them use a spin-on filter. Your fuel filter, there's two different styles of fuel filters. There's this long one. There's one that's got a glass bow. Now you can do away with a glass bow and use the long one most of the time. Like if you bust a bow, instead of having to buy another bow, you can use the long one filter. Come around here and I'll show you there if you The air filter on this one is a standard paper element. It's not like the oil bath on the gasoline trackers. And I'll show you a little trick right quick. This screws off. I've already put the new one in it, but you install the new one. The hole's not going to line up. It's aggravating to get the boat to start. You stick your finger in this hole right here. Hold that field rip and kind of turn it a little bit. And make sure you've got it lined up. Because it's very important it goes in properly and seals and everything tightens down. But you can do that and make sure it's right. Plus, sometimes this thing fills up with dust and dirt. So it's not a bad idea to... Uh, make sure it's cleaned out. Next thing I'm going to show you is how to adjust the clutch. A lot of people are going to have a quick talk about the clutch. You need to come around here. Tell me what this way. Okay, all of these trackers, well, I can't say all, because they did make some have a single stage, like over 30. But these trackers have got a two-stage clutch. And what that means is, a lot of people don't understand that. What that means is you mash it right there, about halfway, and it'll stop the tractor. You shift gears, it'll stop the tractor. But then you mash it all the way down, and you put the PTO in gear, and it stops the hydraulics. Now, sometimes, on people, some people just can't get the hang of that. And sometimes if it's a tractor that your PTO is never used, you adjust them where the two-stage doesn't work. Because people have a tendency to clutch them all the way down, then the hydraulics stop. Do that a lot on the bigger tractors. But to adjust this clutch, and this one doesn't need adjusting. We're just doing this as an example. This is what you're gonna need. And yes, I bought this from 20 some years ago just to adjust these clutches with. It's a lady finger. I'm not sure what the real name of them is. One side of this thing is 11 16, the other side is uh, 5 8. And you're gonna want to break this bolt here loose. Now don't get it flopping loose, get it where you've got the bump the pedal forward moving. Use some imagination, break it loose. It can be pretty stiff. You might have to hook your two wrenches together to get it to pop loose. But then you take and put your bar in, however you can get in there. If it's a down draft exhaust, sometimes it's in the way. And then you're gonna move it and jam it up against your leg. That's the way you do it. Until it just is touching. What that's doing is moving the fork and putting the release band against the clutch fingers. 
and you've got this loose, you move it till you got somewhere around two fingers, at least one finger, in between right here. That'd be the top of the pedal and the bottom of the step. See where it hits right there? Somewhere in between, you know, one and a half, two fingers. No more than that. Absolutely no more than that. Because what will happen is you get too much. You need some free travel on this pedal. Now, half of that, one inch would be enough to keep from messing anything up. But two inches is kind of, inch and a half is kind of what you go for. You just want to make sure that there's some free travel here before it, the release bearing touches the clutch fingers. That's all you have to have. Uh, a lot of people complain about the clutches releasing all the way at the top. If this isn't tight, if when you mash this, it's not like this. You know, not trying to mash it right here where there's resistance. Adjusting the clutch is not going to fix that. That's uh, another problem. Probably a water pressure plate. Or this just about will slam out. Now to adjust the two stage, I'm not going to show you how to adjust the two stage. I'll tell you. But I don't even know how we go about filming it if we try it. You take this plate off down here. There's four bolts in it. In fact, the 15, 16 bolts. And you've got to get a flashlight and lay flat on your back under this tractor and turn that flywheel. There'll be three bolts with jam nuts on them. And you're going to have to back those bolts off with a thin half inch wrench. You're going to have to have two thin half inch wrenches. I'll be right back. And because around here we have to make things make do, this is a homemade feeder gauge, it's 80 thousandths. Now 75 thousandths would be okay too. The book costs for 90. 90 is too. That's what the book costs for, but it won't work. You need it about 80, 75 to 80. You'll have to adjust those jam nuts to 75 to 80 thousandths. That's between the head of the nut and the plate. If you'll get somebody to match the clutch for you, you'll see how it works. That bolt comes back and hits the plate and depresses the PTO clutch. It's an aggravating job. It's hard to do. And it can be done. I'm not going to tell you it can't be done because I've done it many times. By the way, I'd rather split the track and do it. It's just annoying. You're breathing in clutch dust. Can't see what you're doing. It's just like that. I'm going to show you how to change the oil filter right quick. We're trying to keep the video short. This is the oil filter. And this canister right here. Everybody got a big kick out of that other bit service in the tractor video I did where I dropped the wrench in the old van, but that was my tractor. We were trying to do it quick, and somebody asked me about a video on the, uh, the oil, break, oil bath air breather on those tractors. Okay, I'll go back over what we talked about on the other ones. And this one doesn't have a spring in it. But it's important if it has a spring that you uh, don't lose it. Let me hide around pig, Jake. Let me make sure something else, I tell you. Make sure your new filter comes with a new O-ring before you pull the old one out. So you don't always. And sometimes you're better off to uh, not change it even if it does. I need a straighter one that they do. Need. I got it, baby. A lot of people talking junk to me about not wear about wearing gloves when I've done this kind of stuff. I'm gonna be honest with you. Been doing it. I don't know how long now. 
30 years. You ain't got me by now. Nobody ever heard of where it was, nor mechanic worked them. About 15 years ago. So. And you can't fill it up with oil, no way, because it's got a hole in the bottom of it. But when you go to put it up, fill everything. Make sure you got it all lined up and you feel it when it goes in. Wipe everything off good. And get it reasonably tight. Do not, you don't have to put two wrenches on it. You just need to be careful and make sure you've got it lined up and get it fairly tight. They do make a a housing, you just replace this housing and use a spin on filter. You know, the old plugs right there in the middle of the pan, it's inch and a sixteenth inch. Same thing, get it tight, but don't get it too tight. You don't want it to fall out, but you also don't want it to uh, strip out either. Did you show them them field runners? Mm And this tractor's gonna hold between six and eight quarts of 15W40 oil or 30 weight high detergent oil. And they're not all the same, so it's hard for me to tell you. It's like, you know, all the filters on them are not the same. There's two different fuel filters it could be, three different air filters. Eventually, if I did a video, I could probably cover them all. Bigger drain plan might be a good idea. And there's a drain in here. And sometimes there's a ring up here, sometimes it's copper washer. I'm just picking one of the copper washers. You don't have to worry about it either. These A rings here are all different sizes. There's one, there's two the same and one different. And that's because they're set up for the either the single the filter without the bowl or the filter with a separator. The ones with a glass bowl to separate the glass bowl is a water separator. Remember, it's a flat ring. And it will be. It will be carbly. You got to stand on your head to put it in.
And then sometimes it just wore out a little bit, it'll fall back out when you get through it on. Which, you know, notice of being completely honest, there's a reason why normally I don't change these things until they're stocked up. We don't change them just to be changing them. They are horrible for leaking. But in this case, this is a track you got just bought. So. We're going to change it. That and they're aggravating this crap and bleeding out to you. They are quite possibly the most annoying anything with kind of fuel filler on it. It's quite possibly the most annoying thing in the world. The bleeding. Make sure all your gas is around it. Over here. Now if it has a glass bowl on it, it's easy to over tighten it and bust the bowl. So keep that in mind too. You can always go back and snug it up a little bit more better than you can go to town and get a fuel bowl. So if you're getting scared, just stop. It leaks when you get through, look at it real good. If the O-rings are lined up, you snug it up a little more. <laughs> Okay, now we're going to cover bleeding it right quick. And this ain't textbook, but it's a whole lot easier way to do it. You just want to pump this and pump this and pump this. It's a little hand pump here on the side of the fuel pump. Pump, 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 pump. Till fuel comes out, shut that bleeder off and pump it some more. I usually let my little boy do that. All right, come in, I got some milk shake. This little 5 6 inch plug right here on the side of the injection pump is where by the book you're supposed to bleed. And you can do that too. After you get this full of fuel, you can pump that up and bleed it there. Same deal, pump, pump, pump on a hand pump. What it may do, and what happens a whole lot, people try to do it themselves, and I have to go help them out. Is it'll crank, run about a minute, suck air, and cut off. What you have to do there is come under here. You may have to take the fuel tank off. Sometimes you can reach your hand up in here good enough to get on them. I don't know if she can see what I'm doing or not. I have to feel my way around it. But you're going to have to break the injector lines loose. Now you can break them loose here on the pump. What you don't need to do, if people do a lot, is crank it on starting fluid, ether, and keep it running until it picks up fuel. We won't do that at all because it's just too much liability. It's a good way to mess up the engine. 
Occasionally, if I've got one that just will not pick up fuel, we'll use two-stroke gas and a spray can and a knife either. That's a whole lot calmer. It won't mess up as much stuff. You know, you got your grease fittings at every pivot point. Cup on the back. I'll show you where to check your hydraulic pull at right quick. There's a dipstick right here for the hydraulic pull. If this uses, it's not like the old 30s and stuff to use uh, a mineral oil, this uses actual hydraulic oil. And I think that'd be enough to get you started. If you have any questions, ask me in the comments. I'll do my best trying to help you. And I appreciate you watching.